All right, hey, what's up guys? Dave here, and this is what we got going on today. I'm gonna work on a carbon fiber nose boom uh, camera mount um, for a hang glider. What I've got here is a 3D printed um, layup mandrel, and I'm gonna wrap it with carbon fiber, six layers, six layers, um, vacuum bag it, cure it overnight, and um, then this will be trapped inside. But what's neat about this is this is um, a material called polyvinyl alcohol, or PVA, which is basically the same thing as uh, glue stick, uh, Elmer's glue, white glue. So it dissolves in water. Once this thing is cured, soak it in water, kind of scrub the inside a little bit, and um, this will come out, and I'll have a hollow part with a you know a good good thick solid wall to uh, to make a uh, um, so I can mount a camera boom on the nose of a hang glider. Um, uh, first things first, time to give a nice sanding. So the next step is to um, apply a sealant to the part to prevent it from bonding to the, to the epoxy. So for that, so to seal it, I use a product called B15 from Loctite. Pretty smelly stuff, and it seems to work pretty good. <laughs> Okay, to help make the uh, layup process go super simple, I've got this really cool carbon fiber braided sleeve. So this stuff is kind of like a large Chinese finger trap that expands and you can pull it down to go tight so it'll fit. It'll expand a little bit to, um, actually in this case it won't need to expand at all. We'll just kind of pull it tight and it'll um, I'm gonna slide it on, pull it tight. And what that also means is I can tape the ends to uh, keep it from fraying, which is one of the most uh, frustrating aspects of doing wet layup uh, carbon fiber work. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, measure this out. Now it's not gonna be enough. Uh, I used up um, the rest of what I had on another project, so I'm gonna have to do three layers of this and three layers of regular fabric wrapped around and that's gonna be a little bit tricky. So I think what I'm gonna do is do the three layers of just regular flat material wrapped around. That'll kind of have some voids and lumps and ugly frayed ends and stuff. Uh, and then I'll cover it with three layers of this. That way the braided sleeve will kind of help seal all that together and uh, hopefully have a nice, uh, nice uh, decent looking surface finish. Okay, so here what I'm doing is just kind of laying it out and smoothing the material to get the, um, the kind of the kind of areas where it's been spread from folded, so it's you know so I can measure it out accurately. Then you want to tape the ends, so the tape you know keeps it from fraying. The, the braided sleeve is better than um, than just regular flat fabric for fraying, but um, having the ends taped uh, will uh, help quite a bit. And then when you cut, you cut right over the tape so that the um, so that the ends don't fray. And then you can see how this slides in there, nice and neat. Okay, so now what I'm doing is purposefully spreading um, one of the ends here because my uh, because my part has a oh, is wider on one end. I want to sort of pre-spread the material before taping it. If you tape it down, you know, with the, with the material narrow, then um, then it won't be able to spread. So you kind of can pre-spread it before taping and cutting. And now I have sort of a tapered uh, preform shape. Okay, now I'm using some paper to make a template for my uh, my flat um, material pieces, 
and I'm, I'm gonna need to make some uh, kind of relief cuts so it can um, go around the, the bend in the part and then it's tapered so I trim the ends off. Okay, so next I cut strips of my peel ply and I cut some strips of the breather fabric. Okay, at this point, uh, I think I'm pretty much ready to mix epoxy. Um, uh, the thing with this stuff is you have a limited working time, so you gotta have everything laid out and prepped and ready to go before uh, you start mixing. So um, a couple of things, I've already pre-torn off some strips of tape here. Uh, when your hands are sticky with epoxy, pulling tape off the roll can be really difficult. So I've got the roll ready to go in case I need it. And I've also got tape laid out. I've got rags, make sure you have rags. You can wipe your, I've got gloves on, but you wanna be able to wipe your hands off, uh, you know, excess epoxy regardless. Brush for um, applying epoxy. Got my part here on these uh, aluminum blocks to just kind of be able to let it rest like that. Um, then I've got my um, peel ply and breather fabrics uh, cut and ready to go. And then here's all my carbon ply uh, ready to go. My plan is to go these two guys first. And uh, depending on how smoothly those go on, if they go on pretty smooth and looks good, then I'll save this one for a last cosmetic layer so get this cool you know, um, hexagonal pattern. Um, so I'll do these two, then I'll do three layers of the braided sleeve. And so you can see I've already sort of pre-braided, pre-sleeved two of them, uh, and, and they're already kind of bent because I sort of, I, I, I stuck them on just to make sure they would, you know, fit. Um, so those are ready to go. And uh, I did two at a time here to help uh, speed the process up. Last time we did this, we kind of ran out of time. More rags laid out. And almost forgot this tool, uh, super handy for rolling. Um, for rolling, once you have the fabric on the part, you roll it to uh, help to get the epoxy soaked through. Okay, I've also got my vacuum bag prepped over here. Um, it's ready to go. All I got to do is stick the part in, pull the backing tape off here, stick it down good. Um, I don't have a proper uh, a valve for the. Uh, for the um, you know for the for the hose, so I just kind of uh, jerry rigged something, but that actually works pretty darn well. Vacuum pump's ready to go. Uh, make sure to remove that cap, <laughs> um, and then I got my scale here, and uh, so when I'm ready to go, uh, here's my cup and my epoxies. I'm using the West Systems resin and uh, the 206 slow hardener, which. Um, it's kind of not slow enough, it really only gives about 20 minutes working time, which uh, can be a little limiting. So um, extra gum tape to help seal up the bag, uh, popsicle stick for stirring, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it, pretty much ready to go. I don't know how much of this process I'm going to be able to actually uh, film because I'm just going to have to set the camera and let you guys watch, so hopefully it'll be interesting. To start off, I'm applying a pretty thick layer of epoxy. I'm just going to kind of pour it on here and then spread it. I want it really thick on there so I make sure there's no you know, air bubbles or voids and to help the, to help the carbon uh, hopefully stick to the, to the mandrel. 
and so I'm just trying to get it to stick down and get the epoxy to start soaking through the fabric now. So now I'm trying to get the, the ends to stick down and you'll, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but I'm having a real difficult time getting the edges to uh, stick down. It just, they just don't want to, uh, they really don't want to stick. The material really doesn't want to conform to this, uh, this tight small radius. So I'm kind of giving up on that and just applying another, another layer to hopefully, you know, that'll help stick it down. It's kind of working, but I'm also just kind of making a mess here. And uh, so just throw another layer on. Um, at this point, I kind of want to just get through it so I can uh, put, the, uh, put the braided sleeves on to hold everything together. You can see the edges fraying there, and you can see some toes that have been pulled out of the material that are laying on the table. And now I'm just kind of just kind of mashing it together. And all right, get the sleeve in there already. Once the sleeve is on, you can just kind of, kind of pull it out tight like this, and it goes on really nicely. Now I'm adding quite a bit more epoxy. I want a really thick layer of epoxy because I'm going to put a double layer of the braided sleeve, and I'm doing two at a time just to make the process go a little quicker. Uh, concerned about the working time with my um, with my resin. So now you can see I can just really pull it tight and work the material out nice and tight and work the resin into the material and you end up with a really nice uniform finish. Now I'm wrapping the um, peel ply which isn't quite going as smoothly as I hoped. It doesn't really want to conform, it doesn't bend. And now I add the breather ply, and I'm wrapping it in the same, the same way. Finally, I'm ready to stick it in the vacuum bag. And so I'm trying to kind of work the, the edges of the bag so that I, I kind of have one seam along the edges and then, uh, then seal off the end with the, uh, with the gum tape. And I'm just kind of trying to pull the bag away so I kind of have one uniform seam, hopefully all the way around as, it, uh, as it, the vacuum sucks it down. All right, I got it in the vacuum bag. Pump is pumping away, and um, what I've been trying to do is just get a single seam along the, the back side and then one along the, the front side here. Um, and then so hopefully that combined with wrapping the peel ply and the breather, you know, like a tape, hopefully that'll sort of give me a uniform compaction and I don't end up with, you know, a bunch of uh, these ridges on there. So we'll see how it comes out. Um, uh, I'm a little more, uh, I think this one maybe will work a little better than the last one. And, um, but, uh, so now we just got to wait, um, like 16 hours or something like that. It's <laughs> the worst part, the waiting, like Tom Petty said. Okay, well, I was afraid of this happening and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a complete failure. Um, notice how the part has crushed in here. Uh, I was I was afraid of this happening. Um, yeah, look at see how much badly it's collapsed in on on the sides there, and, and then in here, look look at that. Oh man, yeah. Uh, it looks like it's it might be okay out here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what what happened was the um, the 3D printed material 
the the PLA material is a is a is a little bit flexible, and so I, I printed this one with with a bit thin wall and with really low infill percentage, um, partially to uh, make it print faster, but also to save material because it's really expensive. And um, the last one that we made, I kind of went overboard, and I thought I made it too strong. And um, so I can see now that um, that uh, I don't think you can go too strong on it. So um, oh, also having less material uh, in there means there's less to dissolve away at, at when it comes to that step. Um, but uh, it appears that what I've done is uh, not strong enough to withstand the pressure from the vacuum. So... Um, yeah, um, I, you know, if if this if this part of the part works out, you know, from here to the elbow, if that kind of works out, then the part might be salvageable, might still be useful. Um, this just needs to fit inside a tube, and um, it, you know, it'll certainly be strong. Um, and um, so there's a possibility that you know I might be able to salvage something out of this, although it's going to look like a really funky, ugly, yeah. Yeah, thing. Um, so, uh, but I might as well, it's in the vacuum bag and it's uh, got a nice vacuum on it, so I might as well let it cure overnight and pull it out of the bag tomorrow and see what I get. Okay, well, um, this part was pretty much a complete failure. <laughs> um, quite possibly the ugliest carbon fiber part anyone has ever made, so um, I guess it'll be a, a nice desk trophy for that. Um, I think the only successful part of this was that I've got a nice uh, thick wall and uh, at least the epoxy cured up, um, so uh, that's about it. Um, so like they say in science, the only failed experiment is one that doesn't yield any useful data. So as long as you learn something from it, it was a worthwhile experience. So I learned a number of things. Um, number one, you need uh, good rigid tooling, at least rigid enough to withstand um, whatever you're using for compaction. So this was not rigid enough. Uh, number two, um, forget about trying to wrap um, carbon, um, you know, flat carbon cloth around such a small radius of curvature. It just, the edge just doesn't want to stick. You can't wrap it tightly. That, um, if I didn't have the braided sleeves, the thing would have been a complete mess. Well, I mean, more so than it already is. Third lesson is you can't really vacuum bag a part like this either. I've made a few things with this technique, and what happens is the, the bag I mean, d despite the crushed mandrel, you can see how the bag sucks the material away at the edges. So, um, you know, maybe if you had a vacuum bag that was pretty much the same size and not, uh, not so much oversized like I had, uh, maybe you could get less of this sort of crimping going on. And the last thing that I learned was uh, don't wear a black shirt <laughs> when you're making videos about uh, making carbon fiber parts. Um, that would make it uh, a little uh, little nicer to see. So in the future, I'll wear a, a brightly colored shirt for better contrast when working with these parts. So having said that, um, I, I'm pretty disappointed in the way this worked out, but I also pretty much know exactly what I need to do to have a successful part. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and that means I'll get to make another video for you guys to watch. So thanks for checking it out. Um, you know, like and subscribe, all that stuff. Help me out. That would be awesome. And I'll see you on the next one.